Hi, Joe. It's great to have you here. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I just want to let you say hi, and then I'll share your background here. Yeah. Hi, George. Thanks. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, too. I'm noticing I'm like just experiencing the warmth of being in your presence and just, you know, those kind of nice feels of excitement of oh, where this conversation you. might go. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. For having me. So let me just share a bit of your background. I think this conversation will be very um, meaningful and maybe even transformational for for those who are, are, are watching and listening. Um, so Joe helps big hearted, creative overthinkers to connect to deeper levels of intimacy, creativity, and embodied freedom. And Joe, you do this through uh, work with uh, people's trauma, shadow, shame, shame work, uh, using embodied healing, somatic therapy, somatic movement, sound and voice work. Uh, you, uh, Joe is part of the leadership team of the Focalizing Institute, which I'll have you explain later, whose mission is to apply body awareness for trauma healing and personal transformation on an individual and global scale. Um, amazing stuff, really deep work, and uh, there's so much we can talk about, but in the sort of our, our pre-conversation, I wanted to bring forward a couple of, uh, of issues to discuss. One of them is how there's a, there's an overarching um, subconscious feeling of not enoughness mm. in much of our society. And I would say, especially among those who are uh, in my audience, not, 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 you know, not, not just in my audience, lots of people, but, but just the people who um, are especially like, I guess, caring, conscientious, um, heart-based people, I find uh we tend to carry that that mm. sense but t t tell us tell us more about what you mean by not enoughness how you've seen it you know manifest in in in, in your clients and maybe in your own life if, you know, whatever mm. you can share yeah um i think where to start with that is there's 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 often a uh a, a, an individual story running of that which which to, you know to some degree stories always protect us you know they're there they're, they're there for a reason until they're no longer helpful right um the the piece that i'm talking about in terms of this kind of overarching not enoughness is is something that i see and just have really been questioning in my work over the last few years and this is this more like um contextual piece that we have in Western society of always, um, you know, always chasing for the next thing. And I think this is kind of, um, there's that in itself is interesting actually. So if we even just part where we were going with that and sit right with that, there's in, in, in trauma healing, in any kind of healing or in any endeavor to be intimate with life, we have to become in relationship to it. And, and what gets in the way is um, the, the, the kind of mind or the conditioning that wants to either um, distract or detach from it or become deeply immersed and lost in it and that can be a lot of people's kind of experience certainly in the early days of of healing and and actually the sweet spot is somewhere in between where we just kind of bring things that might be challenging just enough close so that we can kind of metabolize and and move through and learn and and, and be with and be in relationship with it in a different way and the reason why I just pause there is because I think that sort of that lends itself to understand why maybe we want to detach or distract. Now, to some degree, that's like really human. You know, it's, it can be difficult to be with stuff. But at some point, I think as a trauma therapist, I think most I, I, I think most people will start to question, well, if the body, you know, somatic therapy works on the basis that the body is, the answer is always within the body. We know we are innate medicine cabinets, right? So at some point you've got to ask, if we're innate medicine cabinets, what is 
getting in the way of the conditions that need to be met in order to heal. And part of that is this really hyper capitalist kind of culture of not enoughness, you know, so there's this sort of distraction about kind of what next or, you know, or, or you've got to release those feelings, you know, they're kind of, you know, they're no longer serving you release or go on to this shiny new thing. And this kind of, for me, fits in this, in this space of kind of distraction or de detachment. And we definitely have that, you know, we, we have it in so many different strands, so many, and, and even to some degree, I think it's like really beholden on us to, um, you know, speaking to your audience that, that may be in sort of similar realms of healing, um, just to be kind of really curious about the language that we use. And I know you touch on this within your marketing, and actually this is one of the reasons why I was really keen to work with you, <clears throat> apart from we'd sort of touched base and I just understood your presence. I remember the video that you did about, um, I think you call it lizard brain marketing. And I, I, and I, and I think it's really beholden on us to um, understand the shadow that we cast when we are sharing information and kind of not there's this fine balance of wanting to support people to live in an embodied freedom way, you know, or to kind of heal or whatever it is that, that you do, but not um, either become immersed in it. Like that's the only way of living. If you haven't done this, then you're not healed. You're not whole because that's not true. Like life's tough enough without sending those messages out. And that can, that can kind of, lead us into this full immersion in it so that we're too immersed, we're not sort of living, you know, and I, I can certainly say I've sort of been in that um, in the past and can recognize that. And then there's this other space, which is, um, yeah, this kind of distraction on maybe the sort of shiny, the, 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 the shiny um, uh, way out or, or detachment. and. Yeah, so I think I'll pause there, actually, and just I'm curious, you know, how that sort of landed or if there's yeah. anything. No, kinda, yeah. It's it's brilliant. I think it's there's and there's so much there to unpack. I, um, yeah, as a as a as a marketer, as a business person, you know, this question is very um, important to consider. It's like, how how can how can I share content and offers and ways of thinking and behaving, uh, which I believe are helpful for people without um, sort of expanding that feeling of not enoughness, you know? And, and um, there's, so it's like, I'm, I'm always seeing, well, how can like just the way that I market myself itself hopefully is a healing healing journey for people it's like a healing uh, influence for people yeah. and help helping them feel more whole and I, I love what you said about how it's like it's not true that you need yet another modality or method or you know school of thought because you're not whole yet mm. um so but the the reality is that well, there's day-to-day -day experience where people don't mm. feel whole, um, mm. where people don't feel enough. And mm. when, when you have clients or, or students, um, you know, experiencing that, uh, how do you guide them towards mm. more wholeness? Mm. It's, uh, yeah, let me just sit with that because I, I, I just want to speak to that in that there. Your wholeness is present mm. as, 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 as part of you, regardless of where you are on that journey. It's simply always present. But the lived experience of wholeness and maybe the, the maybe less judgmental mind that, you, that, that one isn't whole, but that relationship shifts. So it becomes more um, in focus that sense of wholeness but it is absolutely present in, in fact it's 
one of the key agents in the healing journey is that in, on some level, the wholeness is always there. It's a bit of a philosophical couch kind of view of it, but. No, it's great. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love that because there's a sense of security when, mm. when something is always there, mm. you know, and that, that deep feeling of security, mm. uh, well, it, it holds, holds me and allows me to return again and again. So I really love the way that you put that. So, um, mm. live, you know, the, the reality of it uh, versus the lived experience, I guess. You know, the yeah. Current, the current focus. Yeah. 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 And, you know, in answer to the sort of direct question about how, how, how do we bring that kind of into focus? Um, and my practice is kind of multifaceted, as you said, you know, but predominantly um, I, I work somatically within the body and there's, there's tools to do that, but interest. What what fascinates me is more less about the tools, which are somatic therapy tools, which are kind of like working with the nervous system, um, working with different types of energies, working with movement, working with visualization. He has all these different embodied tools. What fascinates me about it though, and what, what I know to be really true is, it's not necessarily the tools, it's how we set the conditions. And I'm like such a geek about this. So it's the kind of the conditions that we set. How do we really meet somebody where they're at? How do we enable, um, you know, a true no shame, no blame environment? And, you know, to that, to that end in answer, just sort of answering your question through that lens, you know, absolutely meet somebody where they're at. You know, we don't, this ideal picture of, you know, this philosophical couch thing that I've said about the wholeness being present all the time. You know, do I know that in every waking moment in my lived experience, even as someone who's this practitioner, no, there are moments when that doesn't feel as in focus, for sure. And, um, but I know it's there. And, and, and that guides me to be able to have the security to meet somebody where they're at when it doesn't feel like it's there and actually explore that. So before like even trying to kind of go, you know, well, you, you're, you're whole, you're this, you know, we need to um, really meet someone where there's at. And, and part, of, uh, part of trauma healing is also um, healing from shame. You know, they're, they're really interlinked. They're, they have this very interlinked kind of relationship. So being able to set a space where in, you know, your own embodied presence has a, an, an impact in the um, co-regulation and where just as a human, you can meet another human and explore, okay, you don't feel whole. So, so, so let's explore that without any right or wrong. What is that experience for you? And, and kind of move through that um, exploration in a, um in a body centered way and and generally speaking when we move through that in the body centered way the mind goes whole not whole not whole <laughs> you know it's kind of like a binary thinker but when we move into the body or into kind of heart energy it's much more nuanced and the majority of times once there's been enough exploration of that and there's been enough of these different somatic explorations, all this like landscape of kind of information, which is ultimately connected to earth body and to, to everything else, this kind of, this gives rise to not just the one thing that's been present, this feeling of not whole. We start to sense other things, like maybe just the mustard seed size of, oh, that feels like wholeness or, or something else. And, um, and, and that's, that's one way that I'd speak to it. And then also I would speak to it in that there's a lot of somatic therapy for me is, is really similar to um, shamanistic work in, in this kind of soul 
reclamation you know this this kind of shame piece where you know we we've been um, maybe re rejected by um different groups or um whatever that relational trauma might be relational trauma often kind of cuts us off from a part of ourselves because we might be ashamed then and afraid that we'll be rejected again and by when we metabolize what hasn't been metabolized in that when we're dealing with something specific in that sense there's space and safety for this element to come back in it's beautiful thank you for that um, one of the things uh, what when, you know you work with the focalizing institute mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. i want to just give you a chance to um, i mean i know it's related but what is what is focalizing or, or what what does that mean uh, yeah, thanks for asking. I love um, uh, I love my work with the institute. So um, I've worked. It's, it's focalizing is one of the somatic therapy tools that I use, and um, it's a um, it's just a really beautiful healing modality that tends to um, unresolved trauma, conditioned thinking and intimacy barriers, which are often one in the same, you know, they're all kind of very interlinked. And the work that I do um, is training other therapists, coaches, facilitators, creatives in adding this body-based modality to their um, toolkit. And, and often it's kind of people sort of walk towards a course because they're like, oh, you know, and kind of working with clients and, you know, or, or everyone has this deep yearning to be, you know, as much support as possible and just kind of senses that maybe something, just something's a, a bit missing. And that piece is generally kind of just bringing in more working with the body. So, um, so yeah, so that's the work that I do. We train, the, the Institute's been established since like, um, like around the 80s or something, um, Dr. Michael Bikichu, who was a, um, a humanist psychologist, um, master addictions um, counselor, master sexologist, um, one of Peter Levine's early colleagues, you know, they were kind of um, doing similar work at similar times. And um, yeah, it's... Um, but the course that we uh, are running for the rest of the year is a practitioner course, which is um, really super accessible. So one of the reasons I trained in this and then I kind of started at the start of the pandemic, I started knocking on the door because Michael passed away. So the whole organization kind of just took a bit of a pause. And then I started to knock on the door of, of, of Nick, who's now my co-trainer who's one of the directors and said, this is like fundamental, everything that, this is fundamental, you know, we're collectively in a kind of freeze mode. This is gonna have massive impact on echoes of unresolved trauma. Things are gonna start kind of coming up. And I really see this modality as something that is completely accessible. You know, a lot of the, the courses are, kind of you know three five years you know very expensive or, or I don't want to use the word expensive actually because that's not right it's just it, it takes a lot of commitment both time and different types of resources and whereas this actually is a really comprehensive course we're not kind of teaching you what you get taught in trauma books because there's enough of those out there right you know, we were very practitioner first. It's how to be, it's the so what. It's like, okay, so you know that the nervous system is in place. And we, we tend to that, we have a whole class of nervous system, but really what we want to tend to is this community of folk that can do great work, knowing how to really um, creatively um, and gently navigate working with unresolved trauma wow thank you and you have an upcoming training uh well uh, you know some people might be watching this <laughs> months later so 
uh, we'll certainly, I'll certainly put the link below for, for more yeah. information to, yeah. to when after you do. Maybe we can end on this one topic that's quite interesting and um, I can also link to your blog post on it, but uh, trauma-informed manifestation. Mm. Um, you know, I hadn't heard of it before you started talking about it. So uh, can you give us a taste of what that means? And uh, like mm. I said, I'll, I'll, I can link to more info below. Yeah, no problem. So, so first of all, I would say I really want to be really clear that um, I, I view nothing wrong with manifestation. It's not for me to say if manifestation is is good or bad. You know, the mind wants to judge. It's not for me to say it's good or bad. Um, what I do want to offer is a perspective on the way that. Um, manifestation could be at odds with a healing journey and the way that I look at this is some manifestation comes from a place that place of lack that place of not enoughness and, and scarcity and I'm not good enough unless which kind of falls into this let me distract from what's really going on here you know so it falls into that bracket that I spoke about before, if that feels right, you know. And, and again, I, to some people, it can be really resourcing. So I, so I have mixed views on it. And, and it, it can only be, people can take from this what feels right for them. So it can come sometimes fall into that place of lack. Done well or done well in a trauma-informed way, it can support so one of the ways that we work is when when trauma healing is resourcing first so finding out what's nourishing so we start from this like we're not rolling up sleeves and looking at everything that the mind says is wrong we're like oh what's good what's good here you know so we kind of start with that and in some ways um you know manifestation and that belief that something can change or that belief that we have that um sense of empowerment can be really supportive so I hold these two things so I think the thing to watch out for is you know is this coming from a place of lack and maybe if it is maybe instead of kind of this sort of um like <gasps> I need to leave the experience that I'm in because my finances are bad <gasps> I'm going to manifest a million pounds that kind of energy Instead of that, maybe kind of settle into, I'm going to build a, a healthy relationship with my money. Ah, I'm speaking your language, actually, aren't I? <laughs> it's something that you do. So instead of that, it's kind of, yeah, like, and, and that in itself is manifestation because you become aligned and there's a sense of embodiment with that. So it's just a slight nuance on manifestation and yeah, maybe it might kind of just add some food for thought. You know, it's absolutely, it, even though it's subtle, it's so important because the perspective and the embodiment uh, is there throughout the action taking, which mm -hmm. um, creates a different relationship to our business, to other people, mm -hmm. to our offers, to how we announce mm -hmm. our offers, et cetera. And so, no, it's, I think it's absolutely uh, yeah. important to think, think about. I will certainly, um, I think this is an interesting topic and I'll certainly link below for, um, for more mm -hmm. info on this and, and uh, people can uh, connect yeah. with you as well if they, uh, they yeah, like to exactly. talk more about it. Yeah. And I would just add actually that kind of, you know, I, I, it's one of the decisions to sort of work with you because I, I kind of felt that a little bit in my business and you know, I could feel that kind of like are uh, you know just that sort of pull to stretch out and and a word that I use for being in your group is like I feel like I'm really inhabiting my business now and that's that's manifestation in in, in a way because I'm aligned now you know there's this there's a very different quality so yeah thank you for kind of you know helping me embody some of that that Absolutely. I really need well to. I you've already done a lot of the work <laughs> and and now you're kind of uh, making that uh, even more apparent you know in, in in your in your business so um thank you 
Joe, for oh, thank you. <laughs> the work that you do and and the the, the way that you do it. And uh, so I look forward to, to seeing if folks have any comments about this. And um, yeah, there will be links below to connect with you. Anything yeah, else you want to say as we as we complete any kind of parting encouragement or advice for those um, who are watching? Uh, yeah, just uh, that yes. now. <laughs> There's a lot right now, you know, and, and I yes, think yes, yes. I think we need to go to the mat meditation mat for three hours and just kind of yeah. uh, just that sometimes like yeah. I'm there with you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, awesome. Thank you, Joe. And uh, appreciate the work that you do. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Mm.